Today, we're going to experiment with chameleon markers. I hope this video brings me some karma. Karma chameleon. Karma, 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 karma chameleon. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm so sorry. G'day ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Draw with Jazza, I'm Jazza, and now I have that song stuck in my head. Come and go, come and go. I always thought it was like, come on, like, you know, come, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come here. I was an idiot. Was. So I've been sent a whole bunch of art supplies from Chameleon, and they do pencils. I did not know that. I was expecting them to send me markers which they seem to have done. These are called color tops. These don't look like normal markers. We're just gonna have a right old adventure of surprises today. I'm gonna be 100% straightforward with you guys in this video, things I like, things I don't like. I'm grateful that they sent me this stuff to show and share with you guys, but of course my interest is what you guys get out of it. So hopefully I can share with you the pros, the cons and I don't know, I was trying to rework that to go into the Karma Chameleon song somehow, but I couldn't think of anything clever. Wait, 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 wait. And that way you'll be happy that you came and didn't go. Cut. Come it. I give up. This is a 52 super set, so I guess this is one of their big sets. Thanks, Chameleon. But I don't know what the difference is between these and color tops. I'm going to break this video up into three parts. Part one, we're going to look at the things. Part two, we're going to experiment with the things. And part three, I'm going to use the things. I'm going to create an artwork of some sort and see how they handle, but we'll sort of ease our way into it, starting off by looking at the things. This is a little bit fancy. Looks like you go... <laughs> uh, look at that. Accessories include spare nibs in a packet. You can't really see them super easily, but I can feel them in my fingers. I feel them in my toes. <laughs> what is wrong with me? Why do I keep singing 80s music? Is it 80s or is it 90s? I'm gonna Google this. Love is All Around by the band Wet 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 is from 1995, but uh, Come Chameleon is from 1983. The more you know. In looking at these markers, probably worth looking at the price. I actually don't know because they just sent me them for free. I'm going to flash the price on the screen for the nearest equivalent price pack next to a Copic pack of the nearest number of colors. Basically because Copics are the most expensive that I'm aware of and the ones that I do use regularly. And for those of you who watched a couple of weeks back, we actually reviewed some cheap Copic knockoffs that cost 16% of the price, but surprisingly held up like 80% of the way there. Like quality wise, they weren't too bad. Now, obviously these are sort of huge and have some sort of function I'm not aware of. These uh, color tops, as they're called on the packaging, seem to be the top bit. And I don't know how to use them, but it has documentation. We also need to have a look at the pencils. I'm half expecting the, <laughs> the pencils to be like this big and in like three parts. They're not in three parts, but they are in two parts. So I was partially right. <laughs> so we're going to transition into part two of this video where I'm going to have a bit of a play. All right, it's time to give these things a go. Let's start off with the chameleon pen. This thing is pretty huge just to compare to the Copic. And as you can see, it's quite a lot longer and quite a lot thicker too at its thinnest point. Now this top part, I believe is called the color top and I don't think I think you're meant to keep it on there. I think you're meant to take it off. However, you're also not meant to let the nib inside there dry. This is the lid on one end of the pen. So you've got a sort of solid bullet nib like that. Good for details and refined areas, but not great for a solid flat, larger area of color. And then we have the brush tip, which is a lot softer. It's not a very big brush tip. I expected it to be a little bigger. This, for example, is compared to the Copic brush tip. But now we really need to come to the crux of the point of the chameleon pens, which is mixing and the way that they boast blending colors. And in theory, you're supposed to be able to blend with any other color, light to dark, dark to light. So let's give that a go. I've got like this medium green. So if I select a much lighter, I think yellow is a good place to start. And then for a darker, let's go with this indigo. 
I think that's uh, definitely a darker color. So start off blending with light into our uh, medium tone. You take the nib of the color you want to blend towards and insert into the mixing chamber. And then you're also meant to tip it upright vertically, 90 degrees for as long as you want it to work for. So the idea is that's five seconds, that's 10 seconds, and you can see it sort of becomes longer in duration. So uh, let's try, I mean, I guess that's been what, 15 seconds? Let's give this a go. I'm just going straight away. There you go, you can see the yellow. And as I go, you can see it slowly going back towards the green. That's pretty cool. That did immediately go towards the yellow. You can see a tiny, tiny bit of green at the start there. But you know, it's not its not that bad. That's a, That was pretty nifty. I guess something I'm really curious about, to put it blunt, and you might be too, is as to whether this is going to be useful in creating art or if it's a bit of a gimmick. All right, so I'm now going to blend dark to mid and I'm just going to hold this up. Let's hold this for quite a while. Let's go 35 seconds. Okay, that's been 35 seconds. I'll take this off and we'll just get stuck into it. There we go. Nice solid dark blue. Just keep an eye going. That's quite a lot of blue in there. Impressive. You wouldn't think it's a green marker yet, yeah, that's for sure. It's really, uh, oh, here we go. Now we're slowly returning to our green. Very interesting. We're not just immediately dipping to our original green. So that's uh, seemingly the, the longest they want you to do it for. I don't know if you can go much beyond that, but I'm not keen to try and potentially ruin the markers. There are some obvious pros and cons to this. It's bulky, the lids are awkward, but that's kind of cool. I am genuinely curious to see how it works practically. But that's our experimentation and I'll leave playing around with the rest of the markers till later when I'm going to create an artwork. Quick note before moving on to that though, the containers that come just with the color tops on their own is kind of cool how they have these like, you see these rivets on the outside of the containers. So in theory, snap this in here. Oh, there we go. And just like that, I have one big sort of chunkification of all my uh, color tops. That's kind of cool. Now let's have a brief look at the pencils here. And from what I can tell, the idea is that the uh, the colors are sort of complementary. I have two colors in one pencil, but they're sort of like a light tone and a darker tone, and they're meant to blend together. So let's just give this a go. And the theory is, you take your pencil, you color in your bloody color on the paper. Oh, look at this color, a bit of blue. And then you flip, and then you can uh, do a slightly darker tone, and then you can flip back to like a blend. So that feels kind of cool. Again, this is sort of all a bit mysterious to me. I don't know how practical this is all going to be and that's what this video is meant to explore. So we've done a little bit of playing around. We've explored the the initial impression of I guess some might say the gimmick of the uh, the chameleon pencils but now I'm going to dive deep into an artwork and we're going to see really if it is a gimmick or if this is revolutionary, if this is going to change the way you create art. I have no idea and I'm going to genuinely get stuck in for the next few hours and create something cool with both the pencils and the markers. And then uh, I'll give you my verdict. So I thought it fitting for my chameleon marker test that I create some kind of cartoony action hero character with features inspired by the lizard chameleon creature. I went with a blocky edgy look and drew the character with an underbite and goggles to capture the essence of a chameleon head and gave him a long tailed coat that curled inwards like a chameleon tail. I did the line work with a double sided pen that came with the set. The pen has a medium of four millimeter end on one side and a slightly thicker six millimeter end on the other. I did a bulk of the lines of the character with a four millimeter nib and then erase the sketch underneath, leaving only clean lines. So it was time to then put the markers to the test. Starting off with the leather of the gloves and helmet, I used the caramel brown as the base and used a rich dark earthy brown as a secondary color. And I must say that the blend results are pretty great, though the process is less straightforward than I'd like. Now, although the outcomes can be satisfying, particularly when you get the blend just right, I found that came with a few caveats. As nice as the blend could end up looking with minimal effort, a lot of it depended on getting the timing and soaking of the secondary ink just right. If you don't leave it to soak in long enough, you have to go back and double up on the saturation and attempt your timing again to try and get the dispersion as close to how you want it as possible too long and then your shadow or highlight areas take up too much room. I found it's really hard to go back and fix the middle area of the blend. It's not like Copics or other alcohol markers where you can just go back to your highlight or mid-tone and re-blend, going back to the middle of your blend after you put down 
the Chameleon Blend tends to stand out for some reason and make oversaturation streaks. Intricacies of the blend aside, the process itself was so frigging convoluted it's hard to even describe. Blending between two colours turns what should traditionally feel like a two or three step process into what feels like a ten step process. Get your two colours, find the nib you want to blend with, take the mixing chamber from another colour marker you want to blend with or just grab a mixing chamber on its own, take the cap off the mixing chamber, take the cap off your preferred nib end, insert it into the mixing chamber and hold vertical at a 90 degree angle for the precise amount of time to get the optimal blend and then after all that you can finally put your marker onto the paper, thank god, but don't thank god too early because by this point you're praying that it transitions into the area and blend that you hoped or planned it would. I found when mixing a dark colour into a base light like the leather here it's better to be on the more careful side and just top up on the darker colour and reapply rather than to overdo the shadow which you can't take back once you've put it down. It feels like a lot of guesswork and I ended up going through that soak in and waiting time more than I would have liked. Also sometimes the blends looked more streaky than I would have liked and it's hard to go back and fix with this system. Finally after you finish applying the blend you have to reverse the whole beginning process and put the right caps on the right parts and fiddle around with five to six little bits around your bench and put everything back together and pick up your next combination. <laughs> So as you might imagine, it does start to feel a bit like a puzzle at best, if you're into that sort of thing, or a lot like waiting around and unnecessary juggling and confusion at worst. Blends between opposing colours, such as the light blue and dark warm purple, are admittedly quite satisfying to do, and the results can look very pretty. So I'm sure there are some artists who would gain a lot from this system. However, going in and finishing small areas of single colours or simple blends comes weighted with the baggage of the bulky mark and long-winded blending system that a lot of the time I found myself feeling like it was a lot of effort for what should be a pretty basic process. After I put all the colours down I used the colourless blender to neaten up the edges and then I turned to the thicker 0.6mm fine liner to apply around the edges and get a clean solid look. And then finally I experimented with the double-sided blending pencils to add energy to the background. Now the pencils are meant to be, I don't know, paired with complementary colours which are in theory meant to blend seamlessly and be super high quality pigment and blending and crap. To be honest, they felt just like average pencils with a gimmicky description. If anything, I found it was super annoying how the other end of the pencil kept stabbing my wrist. I'm pretty sure these pencils were designed by a marketing person who thought up a really cool gimmick and hook rather than actually, you know, an artist. But who knows, maybe there was an artist who designed them who really enjoyed the feeling of pigment heavy wax being sharply jabbed into their radial artery. I don't know, some artists might be into that sort of thing. <laughs> All right, so I've walked you through my experience. Now I want to share with you some of my final thoughts and verdict, but credit where credit is due. The results do speak for themselves in a way, as far as, you know, can you get a, a professional looking image? I feel like, yeah, the colors are quite strong and some of the gradients and transitions, particularly with the ink, are quite nice. They're not worth dismissing out of hand. However, there are some pretty key issues that I have with both of these, the pencils and the markers. I'm gonna start off with the pencils. I felt no nicer using them, particularly when it comes to blending, than I do with my regular Prismacolor pencils. If anything, I actually feel like it's a little bit more grainy in their visuals. It's harder to make it look smoother. Normally, I just use these Prismacolor Premier pencils and you get 48 pencils for half the price of a pack of 25 of these Chameleon pencils, which amount to, I guess, a total of two more colors, but keeping in mind that all of the colors are literally half the size, actually, I mean, just looking at this, less than half the size of just one Prismacolor Premier pencil. I might have given it a little bit more room to give a thumbs up if the experience really was that noteworthy, but just to be completely blunt with you, they were just pencils. They weren't bad pencils, but they weren't great pencils, so... And now we arrive to the markers, and this is where, again, I'm a, I'm a little conflicted. It's, it's hard for me to say too many mean things because there are a few really great things that they do fantastically well. Packaging and presenting and their branding, all of that, really nice. It feels special. The colors of the markers themselves, it looks great. Some of the gradients do look great, but the experience, not, not to the final result, but the experience of using the markers is not great. It's 
It's just not great. I'm sorry. <laughs> I want to love them and I know some of you will use them. This is my opinion. So those of you who use chameleon markers or pencils and love them, that's great. You're allowed to use them and love them. I'm just sharing my thoughts and I've used lots of different art materials and comparing them to the ones I use often. And for a number of reasons, which I'll go to in a moment, they're not ones that I would pick to use regularly. I feel like were they to reinvent or redesign the product, I would suggest just having markers and these chamber things totally separate. And then just a sticking point for me personally is this feels really bulky, especially when I go to grab a single color. This is what I'm holding. Just like a little bit, it's ridiculous. I personally feel like the form factor, especially of art supplies that you're using constantly really matters. And that's the reason why I use the Pentel P205 as my mechanical pencils, because most mechanical pencils are just that little bit bubbly, plasticky, bulky. They feel a bit cheap and this feels professional and slim and really comfortable. It's the reason and I prefer Copic sketch markers over the default Copics or the uh, the Copic chow markers because the way it feels in your hand as well as the brush tips and all the other bits is really good. This thing does not feel really good and as nice as the result looks and again credit where credit is due looks nice it's not pleasant to hold and I've been using these for the last three hours and I'm sick of using them. <laughs> it comes with this fine liner pen with a 0.6 and a 0.4 on each end and I have never nor would I ever choose to use a fine liner that feels that thick in my hand. This is my actual fine liner. Just look, look at the friggin girth on that thing. <laughs> The markers, however, I'm a little bit torn on because everyone feels different about the user experience and the result really looks fantastic. The pencil stuff in the background could take it or leave it, but the artwork itself looks really nice. And uh, to be honest, it holds up next to the Copic colors. It's the experience, which I find convoluted, but if you find yourself as someone who maybe isn't so pressed for time and really likes the idea of just being able to so effortlessly blend between a light blue and a dark purple without needing a lot of Copic colors, then you know what, maybe it's worth considering considering because they are more affordable. They look great and so does the logo and it's got a cool box. I guess that'll do for this video. Now while this isn't sponsored or anything and Carmelian may not be 100% happy with everything I've said about their markers, I will link in the description to their website where you can check them out for yourself, make a decision for yourself and if some of the, the features and the ways that they work is appealing to you, definitely go check them out and consider getting them for your own art projects and it's definitely very cool of them to have sent this stuff for me to use to, to at least share my experience with you guys. So make sure to hit that like button if you enjoyed this video and my thoughts and leave a comment in the comment section below for maybe some future art supplies or things you want me to check out or try and if you're new here subscribe to draw with jazz for more fun with art and art goodies and art shenanigans we have lots of fun here and we always will thanks for watching ladies and gentlemen and until next time i'll see you later Make sure to subscribe to my channel to see more of my videos. And while you're at it, check out my shop where I sell ebooks, brushes, photo references, video courses, and more. There's another video you might enjoy from my channel over there. And you can also check out my behind the scenes daily vlog channel, Daily Jazzer. That's it for now. And until next time, I'll see you later.